Thanks for tuning in to the 3D Tutor. Okay, so this is about where we left off in the last video. Uh, I'm going to be moving forward and actually going a little bit back to be fair because there's a few details on closer inspection I realized that I missed. So I'm just going to be covering those. Uh, there's one in particular that I want to make sure that we get right. So I'm going to go into uh, the side view and what I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and what we're going to be able to see here is this area just here where the kind of angle comes in slightly so it's almost like it's a chamfer and you can see all the way down uh, it's pretty much the same so that I missed that out completely which is uh, not very good but we're gonna go back and fix that anyway alright so we're gonna go into edit poly we're gonna click onto edge because we're gonna have to place an edge in where we want that uh, fix to be so you can see here it's very it's not really accurate at all so we need to fix that um, so we're going to go ahead and select all of these horizontal edges on this model just there. We're going to go to connect. I'm just going to zoom in and I'm going to reduce these segments to one. And then I'm not going to use paint. I'm going to use slide to bring that over. So it's just on the right hand side, just on this area here, just before it drops down. So around about there is going to be pretty good, uh, I feel. Uh, then we're going to hit the tick. Um, after that we can see there's kind of an angle here we don't actually want that because if we have a look in the image what it looks like is that's a pretty straight edge running all the way up I mean at the top it looks like it bends to the right but actually that's just because the corner is kind of cut off so if I have a look in here if you look there it's kind of cut off like that so therefore it looks like it bends to the right but it actually doesn't that's just perspective so I'm gonna believe that that's a fairly sort of straight angle there so I'm going to go on my scale tool I'm going to simply scale from the right hand side across to the left and what that will do is it will effectively straighten that out um, as much as it will go so if you just keep scaling to the left it will straighten it out straighten it out make sure you don't right click because it will just undo it but um, just I so I keep doing because my mouse wire is trapped underneath my keyboard which is really annoying so I'm just going to redo that there we go that's going to do. Um, I need to move that across, but what's going to happen for me is that when I move this across to line up at the top, it's going to become very close to this area just here. So I'm just going to quickly undo that and I'm going to try and fix this so it's a bit more accurate. Uh, so let's have a quick look and see what's going on down there. Okay, so that's okay. Not too bad. I mean, it's not lined up the best, but I'm just going to pull that across a touch. And especially this one, I'm just going to pull these two just across a little bit, just to straighten that out. It will just give me the ability then to sort of move this entire um, edge across to line up perfectly. So that's okay. Now once again, we're just going to be using this as a reference. Um, it's not going to fit perfectly, again, because of perspective. It just kind of... Um, makes life a little bit tougher uh, in terms of lining this up so I'm just going to be pulling this whole area across just a touch and maybe doing the same just here as well just to kind of make it fit a little better with the reference as we can see we're just a little bit too right at the minute so we're just going to pull that over to line up uh, a little bit more there we go uh, and now I'm going to go back to edge and I'm going to create a small chamfer. Now what I might do is just pull this across to the right just a touch um, and then go with a chamfer. Now again, make sure it's not too high. It has to be fairly small. Again, we can look closely um, and try and get the width as well as good as we can. So as accurate as we can. Um, that's okay. I'm going to look at the bottom here and just push this across. So I don't want to cut through like that. Okay, that's a definite no-no. I'm going to go quite close and that looks pretty good in terms of lining it up uh, next what I'm going to do is go to vertex I'm going to be selecting all of the verts all the way up to the left side of that chamfer so you know we chamfered this edge into two edges we're going to include the left side in the selection okay so this is actually not lined up very well at all but I'm going to be fixing that don't you worry so I'm going to scale this down okay with the middle of the scale tool just like that Okay, so we can see there's a pretty sharp angle there so we've just literally created that and now I'm going to go in and go with the move tool and I can actually line this up a little bit better just by dragging that down not going to worry too much about this because again perspective is hiding this extrusion uh, in that view there so I'm going to leave it like that and the bottom's okay I believe so I'm not going to touch that too much um, let's just double check it let's get rid of the edges 
Again, I like to turn this option off and display uh, the display selected with edge faces. I like to turn that off just so I can hide the edges while I have the object selected still. So, um, yeah, it's pretty good. I think even in the top view, if you look down, it should be chamfered in that angle as well. Uh, one thing we need to do is just go on to the smoothing groups because what's going to happen is it's going to smooth that off with the side, so you're not going to uh, see uh, those edges. Um, so it actually looks too smooth. You can't actually tell it's there. So what's going to happen is I'm going to select one polygon, hold shift, select the next one, and it should select the entire loop going all the way around. And then I'm going to go down to smoothing groups and just remove the number one because that's the same smoothing group as the size. And I'm going to go with number 32 just because it's a different smoothing group. Press F4. Now you should be able to see that a lot clearer. So you can kind of see where that, what that's done um, and it works pretty nicely pretty nicely indeed uh, same kind of thing here as well because what's happening is it's, um, it's moving this off too much so I'm just gonna go ahead and clear the smoothing groups I'm gonna go to clear all and then hit number 31 just so it's something different and you can see what it's done there okay so it's kind of put a set that on a separate edge so it kind of looks a bit nicer all right, so that bit's done there. What we're going to do next is we're going to be going on to um, creating, I guess, the back area. So let's just make sure that's lined up. It's lined up pretty well. Uh, it's not great still, but we're going to be fixing that up in just a second. We're going to do the back. So I'm going to be dragging this whole right-hand side using vertices over to about this edge just here. So where you can see this edge, right about here. In fact, because we're doing it fairly low poly, Let's go to the edge around about here. Now I'm not going to be chamfering in um, just here because I've noticed at the bottom it's fairly complex. It sort of bends into the uh, bottom there. So we're going to keep it fairly low poly once again. I'm going to go to around about here and I'm going to be dragging this down to kind of line up as best as I can. So something like that. Um, if you want to be a bit more accurate, I'm going to give you a little tip of what you can do. Um, the first thing is going to be to go, let's just go to where we wanted to go. Let's go to here. And then we're going to be actually fixing that in just a second. So as, as we can see, it kind of creates an angle like that. And we actually want it to be fairly flat across the top. So we're going to fix that in just a second. The bottom actually looks fairly good. Um, so I'm going to leave it flat just so it appears to um, stand. Otherwise, if you bent that, then it would look a little bit off. I wouldn't really stand as well. We're going to go to edge once again. We're going to click on all these horizontal edges. We're going to go to connect and we're going to slide the connect um, to, I'm not going to go right in the middle, but I'm going to pull it back so it's just behind um, like the dials and stuff like that. So it's just behind those. And then what I can do is I can go onto vertices. And I'm just going to drag and pull that up. Okay, just so it's flat or flatter on the top. Kind of creates that angle okay so if i just move this out of the way for a second you can see what happens there you kind of got that angle just there and that's what we've literally just created okay so we've just fixed the top there and the bottom um so just so it's angling in okay one thing i've noticed is that this model i mean it's not going to work too well um, with the way that i've modeled it like for the back especially because i chamfered the back initially which uh, like again through just trying to model this I've realized that that's not going to work so what I'm going to do I'm just going to go to uh, vertex I'm going to select like the entire column at the end there I'm going to press delete and that's going to leave a big hole on the back of this which is actually fine so don't worry too much it's not really a big deal okay so once we've removed that we're going to go into border we're going to select this border just here and we're going to hit cap Okay, now that's okay, it's, it's kind of closed that gap off, but the problem being at the moment is that the edges don't flow around the back to the other side. So we're going to go to vertex, we're going to select um, the left vertex and the one on the opposite side and hit connect. So we're just going to do this on the main area. So we've got those, we've got this one here to there. Now I know you must be thinking, why did we do it in the first place? Well, the reason being is because um, I actually teach two classes uh, in the college that, that I work. And what I noticed was when I uh, taught one of the other classes, um, I kind of picked up on a few issues with the model and obviously address them. So uh, please make sure that you, you obviously follow this through and you get this done uh, correctly. So we're gonna go now to 
polygon, I believe. So we're just going to first of all go to vertex. Actually, we're going to drag this area here. We're just going to pull it across. So this is the end. We're going to drag it across. So it kind of meets that edge just there. So where we've got this flat area just there, we're going to drag that over <coughs> like so. Next, we're going to go to polygon and we're going to, in fact, next we're going to go to edge because we need to place an edge right here. So you see where this meets with the body of the walkie talkie. <coughs> we're going to select the um, vertical edges going across there. We're going to hit connect and you're going to use slide. Now I've already done this. Um, I mean, it kind of works from the previous setting. So I'm just going to drag the slide just so it meets where it needs to go roughly and hit the tick. Uh, then what's going to happen is because the edge is very bent, it's not very straight, I'm going to go onto the scale tool and then I'm going to scale down in height only. Okay, so scale down in height, not with the middle triangle because else it will do something horrible like that. It's going to scale down in height and if you keep doing it, that's going to flatten that edge um, so it's pretty much straight. Okay, um, and now what we'll do is go to polygon. We're going to select the other polys that we have obviously we've set an edge there therefore we've got we split this poly in half and that's going to allow us to select the areas that we need okay we're going to leave behind the other areas like a, uh, across the top um, and then we're going to go to extrude so we're going to click on to extrude if you want actually you could go on to bevel which is um, fine so if you go to bevel we're going to increase the height so it matches up uh, with the reference image. Then we're going to go to this just here. We're going to pull down the outline so it kind of roughly lines up in this view just there. And then what's going to happen is we're going to go to the bottom. We're just going to go onto vertex and we're going to drag this down. Now, again, this is where we need to be careful because if you had a look, if we go onto polygon and we go to um, bevel, can you see how it kind of crosses over that? edge that's going to be a broken model okay we definitely don't want that so we're going to reduce the outline so it's only slight and then what we can do so it doesn't matter if it comes together a little bit but don't go as much as that so if you see what happens there it overlaps I'm just going to reduce that and what's going to happen is now we're going to go to vertex we're going to click and drag these um, base vertices just there and we're going to drag them up okay then we're going to go to the top. We're just going to click and drag over that one there. And we're going to drag that one down. All right. So that's pretty much what we wanted to do um, in terms of the shaping of this thing. Looking at the images once again, I um, think that works pretty well. Uh, although we can kind of see that it's going to be fairly flat across this area here but if you look at the back you can see it does kind of bevel in on the side so again we are working very low poly so don't worry too much about the individual little details okay so yeah we kind of got the area we're just going to do the very last bit which is just at the bottom um, just here what we could do there is because I've got an edge all the way up here I'm just going to pull this edge down because you know, I'm just going to be saving some polys. I don't have to put a new edge in. That edge is very bent, so I'm just going to scale that down again just to straighten it off. And if we have a look on this side, it's sort of coming out a bit too much. You can kind of see quite a jagged angle there. So I'm just going to pull that back uh, a touch, just this front area there. Okay, just that front area like so. And now I've got this panel here. I can actually go to Polygon and I can just select this one and like all of these three just here. And I can go on to extrude. Once again, that's way too much. So I'm going to reduce that down very slight. And I'm going to use scale this time. I'm just going to scale that in. Okay, I'm not going to use bevel because that could have potentially uh, crossed over these edges just there. So I'm just going to use scale just to bring this in uh, quite a bit like that. And yeah, that's going to be pretty good. I think that's going to give us a pretty decent uh, effect of what we want. Okay, so even looking here, for some reason, um, I kind of left a gap there, so underneath this. So what you would potentially do is if you look on this view, it's actually not lining up very well at all. So I'm going to select this. I'm just going to select the entire kind of top area like so, and I'm going to be moving that up just so it lines up a bit better. Okay, and then just make sure that the base of the dials are kind of overlapping it's gonna ensure that you don't have any gaps all right so pretty much we're 
almost there in terms of the overall shape. I think actually we are pretty much there. Um, we need to just work on like the side panels and stuff next. So we'll be moving into that. So apologies, we've not really moved forward too much in this video. Uh, majority of the work was about fixing the model to kind of make it look more accurate. And you know, just by doing that, I think definitely it's, it's starting to get there and we're starting to get the detail that we require to move on to the next step. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that video, guys. I'll catch you all next time.